Meet Vestbahn, the Austrian open access operator which is changing the game for train travel both in and now out of the country. Competing with OBB's railjet service, the company recently expanded into neighbouring Germany and I'll be travelling with them today from Munich, the Bavarian capital, all the way down to Austria's capital of Vienna, where we'll see just what makes them the way to go. Now sit back and enjoy the ride. Like most services in the Bavarian capital, Westbahn services begin and end at München Hauptbahnhof, the principal station serving Germany's third largest city. However, as most regular viewers will know, things aren't always simple with me, as my Eurocity train not only arrived late, it dropped me off at the wrong side of the station, as Westbahn departs from the other side, so it's a whistle-stop tour today I'm afraid. The origins of Munich's main station date back to 1839, though the location of the current station dates back to 1848. The station was also rebuilt several times, the most major to date being to repair the damage caused from World War II. The station handles the bulk of the city's long distance and commuter traffic, most being operated by the state rail operator Deutsche Bahn with an ICE3 and several regional trains sitting under the station roof. There are of course open access operators here too, including Vestbahn, though to see them we'll have to go a little bit further to the left. As you can see, an extensive refurbishment is currently underway and is expected to be completed in the next few years. This station is the third busiest in Germany, with over 450,000 passengers daily, though as you could briefly tell it's certainly not fit for purpose, with the redesign aiming to address this. Anyway, as could just about be made out on the screen to the right, our train is departing from platform 8 today. To get there, we have to head up platform 11 just here, where we can see an OBB service preparing to depart on a Eurocity to Venice. Westbahn is OBB's main competitor on the Vienna to Salzburg to Munich route against its premium railjet service due to its ability to offer low fares, but I'll get into this shortly. Whilst there are a large range of shops in the station, one that caught my eye was the model shop conveniently located just adjacent to platforms 5 to 10. If I wasn't in such a rush, I definitely would have visited. But for now, our attention diverts to the subject of the video, which is sitting in platform 8. Westbahn operates a fleet of 15 Stadler Kiss 3 electric trains, which entered service in 2021, facilitating the sale of the company's 17 Kiss 1 and Kiss 2 sets to Deutsche Bahn, which will be the subject of a future video. Westbahn is a small company with big ambitions. When the company began operations in 2011, they only ran the Vienna to Salzburg route. The arrival of the KISS 3 sets allowed them to extend some services to Munich in April 2022, with another extension to Innsbruck following that December. One service per day then extended to Bregenz in December 2023, and from December 2024, Westbahn wants to extend its Munich services further to Ulm and Stuttgart. Through Westbahn's website, they offer special fares they brand Superprise. An example of one is €18.99 from Vienna to Innsbruck, which is pretty cheap. As for Vienna to Munich, well, I'll discuss that later. For now, let's get on board. The KISS sets offer full level boarding, though these are double-decker trains, so they are a bit of a double-edged sword in terms of accessibility. As I walk to my carriage, you may notice something a little bit different, but I'll come back to that later. I'm on the upper deck of Coach 12, which is standard class seating and features a mixture of airline and table seating in a 2x2 configuration. I'm in the former today for this trip to Vienna. The journey to the Austrian capital includes two intermediate stops in Germany, at Munich East and Rossenheim, before making our way to Austria's fourth largest city of Salzburg. From there, it's another two and a half hours before we arrive into Vienna's West Station, where we're expected to arrive at around 1552 Central European time. This should be a relaxing journey with some incredible views, and I can't wait to show you more. Owing to congestion, we depart München Hauptbahnhof around three minutes late. Rail services in Germany, regardless of operator, are infamously known for frequent delays. To give you a bit of context, only 52% of long distance services arrived within five minutes of their scheduled arrival time in November 2023, which isn't particularly great. To the right is the rather noticeable signal box, responsible for monitoring and controlling the complex track work in and out of the station, and just before it is the hacker broker, 
which as with Munchen Hotbahnhof was restored after World War II with its present form dating to 1953. An ICE-4 and an ICE-3neo currently await entry into the station as we head east. The ICE-4 will be coming soon to the channel, whilst the ICE-3neo may be familiar to most as I've covered this on the channel before. We now diverge from Munich's complex track work and pass one of Deutsche Bahn's workshops with some trains being older than others. Our first stop afterwards is München Ost, or Munich East, the only other station in Munich to be considered a Category 1 station by Deutsche Bahn, that is, a traffic hub with a large amount of available facilities. We now continue to navigate out of Munich's urban sprawl briefly, so now's a good time to divert our attention to the train's interior. For a standard class seat, I found it to do the job. Its ergonomic design and adequate padding makes it well suited for a four hour journey like this. Foldable armrests are located on the aisle side and the middle of the seats, the latter being raised to reveal two standard European power sockets. The overall legroom is pretty generous for a standard class offering and even features a slight recline to adjust this as you wish. A small storage net is located at the back of the seat in front, with a small fold-down tray table located just above. On this is also a QR code to do a self-check-in to validate your ticket without the need of a member of staff doing it for you, which can also earn you Vespa and loyalty program points. Each seat pair also contains a coat hanger, seat reservation indicators, and finally a draw-down blind at the window which partially blocks out the harsh sunlight. The interior is very well executed, though the poor overhead luggage rack space is probably my only complaint. That being said, there are sufficient luggage racks throughout and plenty of space underneath the seats to store personal belongings, so I can't really complain. Stadler and Vespan did a great job. The outside views are just the beginning of this trip and the channel. Don't forget to subscribe as I have plenty more incredible journeys to come in 2024 and I want you along with me. Thanks! Our second stop, and the last one in Germany, is Rossenheim, the economic centre and busiest region of Upper Bavaria. Vespan serves this station on a limited basis, with the bulk of its traffic being regional services between Munich and Salzburg. Leaving Rossenheim and following the line into Austria brings us some incredibly scenic landscapes of the Austrian Alps in the background, which, coveted in the snow, make for an incredibly relaxing journey as we continue east. The train then passes through Traunstein, following which we cross over the river Traun over the 105 meter long, 25 meter high Traunsteiner viaduct, dating back to the opening of the Munich to Salzburg route in 1860. It is considered to be a landmark of the town, which we can see in the background as we cross over the bridge. It's no surprise that this mountainous railway route can have poor internet connection at times, which is where Vespan's free Wi-Fi comes in. I found it pretty fast speed-wise, and using social media and watching YouTube videos was child's play for it. The last town before the Austrian border is Freilassing, and after passing it, we cross over the Salach River, which signifies our entry into Austria as does passing the OBB city jet Desiro below, having also recently made the same crossing from Germany. As well as everybody's favourite blue and yellow store, Salzburg's Europark shopping centre can be seen as we pass through Taxum Station, said to be one of Europe's most pleasant shopping centres, though I'm sure people who've actually visited it will be able to provide solid confirmation of this in the comments below. Our third stop today is Salzburg Hauptbahnhof, the main station serving Austria's fourth largest city and where the train really fills up as we go on to Vespan's core route. Another Vespan Kiss 3 set can be seen just to the right, preparing to work the operator's second extension to Innsbruck, which I mentioned earlier. Despite having picked up a 20 minute delay since Munich, our train dwells here for a while for what I can presume is either a crew change or lack of available paths onwards. A 10 minute wait later, and we're away again. 
wir bitten um Ihr Verständnis. Well, I've been on the upper deck for pretty much the entirety of the trip, so here's what the lower deck looks like. More overhead luggage space and the same seats and layout, but the views aren't as good as you'd expect. In the area between coaches, you'll also find a small bistro area, which contains a coffee machine and a vending machine, which sells cold drinks and snacks. This accepts both cash and card payments. However, I skipped on this occasion as I wasn't really that hungry and I spent a good chunk of my money on the SBB dining car. The inclusion of bench seating makes for a pleasant environment as well to chill and relax. Vespan has two other classes of travel on board too. Comfort class is found at the driving vehicles of each train and features 2x2 two two table seating only, though one of the vehicles shares with first class which is the highest offering and located on the upper deck. Here seating is in a 2x1 configuration and you also receive a complimentary bottle of water as a welcome drink. Both can be upgraded on board with your standard ticket for an extra fee, which can be reduced with any European Rail discount card, and I mean any discount card. Even my UK 16-25 to Rail card discount, which grants 50% off upgrades and flexible tickets. Even crossing the border into Austria hasn't stopped the snowy landscapes, though that's what makes this trip so much better in my opinion. We then proceed to call up Linz. Austria's third largest city and the upper Austrian capital, which is located around halfway between Salzburg and Vienna. Leaving Linz is a sign that the day is about to close, but the same can't be said about the journey. We are travelling on the fastest stretch of the Westbahn, or Western Railway, which is one of the main lines in Austria linking Vienna and Salzburg. The top speed of the line is 250 km per hour, however, our Westbahn train runs on the line at the KISS 3's top speed of 200 km per hour. To be honest, the train doesn't really look like so it can do above 160 km per hour, so that's a pretty great speed. Westbahn's KISS 3 sets have one accessible toilet on board, which is located in the PRM accessible area of the train. There are also standard toilets throughout as well, but I'll discuss those shortly as they do have a peculiarity. I was surprised by how clean the toilet was, given the amount of people on board, and the fact that this train already worked one service to Munich from Vienna, prior to ours. The amenities are also clearly labelled and functional, which is a bonus. Everything works as it should too, so that's a thumbs up from me. Now to check out the standard toilets, the peculiarity here being that they are gender labelled, which I don't think I've ever seen on a train toilet before, but I'm pretty sure there are others. Have you seen any on other trains before? Let me know below. Before entering Vienna, our last stop and penultimate stop overall is St. Polten, the capital of the state of Lower Austria. The sun then sets and the snow begins to disappear as we enter the suburbs of the Austrian capital around an hour later, with Wien Hütteldorf being our last stop before our terminus of Wien Westbahnhof. To summarise, I really enjoy my journey with Westbahn despite the delay. The expansion into Munich has been a game changer for travel between Austria and Germany, and I can't wait to use them again in the near future. Now the only thing I would say is that for this journey, I was using a first class interrail, and Westbahn strangely puts you in standard class by default unless you pay an upgrade fee on board. However, I instead paid an extra €4.95 for a standard class reservation online, given it was the cheapest and I was expecting it to be busy. Fares for the Munich to Vienna journey start at €23.99 in standard, €35.89 in comfort and €68.89 in first, which is still cheaper than Westbahn's main competitor, Railjet. In the fiddle yard, do keep an eye out as well for one of Westbahn's new CRRC trains, four of which will soon enter service to supplement their KISS fleet. You can certainly count on me to be back for that. The arrival into Wien Westbahnhof is 28 minutes late.
Now it's over to you. Have you travelled with Vestbarn before? What did you think of them and will you be using them in the future? Let me know in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed this video and don't forget to like and share the video to help the channel's growth as well as subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for more content such as this weekly. As for what I'm up to now in Vienna, I came here for the inaugural ride of the brand new Nightjet Next Generation which you can watch using the link above or in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.